right, so welcome back everyone. Here we are looking at a drawing from chapter two of the Force Companion book, which focuses on taking force and bringing it into structure, space, <clears throat> and or form. Uh, you can see here that, Swenly, you're creating a C torso again, right? Yeah, indeed, and I think like we mentioned in the first video, once you get to form, uh, force is very important because it's the foundation on which forceful form stands. So you can just throw it out of the window, you know, like we see happen with a lot of students. Yeah, it's kind of interesting that here, um, this, this torso here, the C shape really does remind me of the flower sack idea from, you know, from like Disney animation, right? Yeah, exactly. Uh, you know, we could see, um, especially over here, forget about that, but up here, uh, it feels like you're starting to describe the top of the sack as well, right? Yeah, I'm using the four surface lines to define the top plane of the torso. Mm -hmm. So these are force surface lines. And that's, as you guys can see here in Swenley's drawing on the left, he's going to be using them quite a bit to sculpt. And sometimes they'll be more purely sculptural and sometimes they'll be able to give us force and form at the same time right yeah indeed and the the funny thing about this is i, I remember seeing artists drawing uh, like this in the past and i'm like how can they draw so loose and end up with a better drawing that when i you know go through the process of constructing it with the uh, tubes boxes and and, and spheres you know, and my drawings were looking very rigid and stiff, and I see them drawing loose like this and end up with something better. Right. And well, th this is the, the thought process behind it. You know, you're really thinking about sculpting, like if you were working with clay, but instead you're working with the force line. Yeah, I think that's a really um, great um, piece of advice there, which is um, sculpt, put that P in there. Um, is to think about drawing force through three-dimensional space through the act of thinking like a sculptor, right? Yeah, exactly. Yeah, that is trying to take up, um, because here's the thing, you know, we start learning force with the idea of like getting from one place to another in the figure, and in essence, these are contours, right? Um, but what I try to make sure I'm teaching everyone, especially in the mentorship sessions as well, is, uh, there is no contour really. I mean, it's sort of an art term and it's an art way of trying to visualize the world, but the body is made of mass. It's not like we're made of edges, right? It's, it's forms that create the supposed edge, right? Yeah. So this whole sculptural idea really helps us start bringing force into dimensional uh, space, into volume, right? Which is a really exciting time period because to me, I think this is when the artists start um, seeing their drawings as something that I think they they were hoping to get to, right? Because granted force, it's almost like you're drawing these spaghetti stick figures. <laughs> right? Indeed. Yeah, and I know that's a frustrating period and it's very abstract. Um, there's like a yearning for, I, I want my drawing to look like a good drawing, not these spaghetti stick figures, you know, but if it's me or Eric Swenley or Diego, or the website, uh, or the books trying to teach you this stuff, um, it's really important to get that first step down to understand where things go, right? To understand just the act of understanding motion, right? Yeah, indeed. I mean, for me, it was, it was really challenging because when I came to study with you, I already was working as a professional artist for a couple of years, you know? So, and my drawings got to a certain, my drawing skills, I should say, were at a certain place that I was happy with them. Mm -hmm. I know I knew that I needed to go further, but you know it felt kind of like learning to draw all over again. So it, it was challenging, but right. I kept reminding myself that if I if I kept doing things the way I did it before, I would keep getting the same results. You know, I I had to go through this new uh, way of uh, thinking and seeing that you were teaching me at that point. And well, look where it brought me now. You know. Yeah. Yeah, no, it's true. Yeah, you bring up a great point. Um, sometimes the students that come to learn the force method and they know how to draw pretty well themselves already, uh, 
sometimes they're the ones who have the hardest um, transitional period, right? Because in a way you do have to go all the way back to square one, which is what's going on here. <laughs> yeah, exactly. Right. And then it's such a rudimentary sort of foundational state that you have to almost strip yourself of, of everything to get there, you know? Yeah. Yeah, exactly. That's exactly how it felt. Yeah. Sorry about that. <laughs> <laughs> but, no, it but was for the cause. Yeah. Like you said, I mean, look at how far you've come because of it, right? Yeah, at a certain point, once you once you understand the force basics, you can just take everything you learn and just put force at the very foundation of that, you know, and then all of a sudden your skills that you picked up earlier have something stronger to stand on. Yes, yeah, yeah, that's exactly right. So one of the main areas that happens in form is the idea of understanding perspective and structure, right? Mm -hmm. And, uh, you know, we have this idea of a box, Right, so here's a box, like a three-quarter view box. Um, these idea, there's many different ways to sculpt force, and I just want to call out some of the things that Swenley is doing here for you guys. Um, over here, I call this crawling in. Right? I, I have to, of course, name everything. <laughs> <laughs> everything has to have some kind of weird label for me. Um, so crawling in means uh, what Swenley did here is he grabbed the force contour edge, right, that we talked about earlier. But the thing to be aware of is that edge uh, is really describing an entire surface in the body. And going through the process of understanding these crawling in moments is a really, really excellent first step into understanding that uh, force actually takes up space. It's also a great way of getting around trying to see the figure as purely just tubes and boxes, which is what typically kills um, somebody's drawings, right? Yeah, indeed. So here we have that um, contour and you crawled your way in across to the turning edge, which is right here, which is like the block or the top surface of the leg, right? All right, so we can see that yeah. this is the box of it, right? Yeah, indeed, it's, it's a more organic way to to indicate the, the box you know you're showing the plane without uh, running the risk of the leg getting rigid and uh, unforceful yeah exactly yeah so this way we're still sculpting with energy but it's almost like we're sculpting a planar um, not more plain but planar meaning having planes um, it's like a planar uh, figure, right? You did it here as well. Like you said, well, there's this big surface of force here. Let me just understand this whole surface for now, right? Yeah, and it's it's really fun. It's really fun to just sit and you have to really take your time, but it's a good exercise, especially it, I know this, it, it really prepares you for shape. You have better line control once you get into shape. Yeah, that's true too. Uh, so sculpting is a great tool for um, better line, right? Because you're drawing so many of them. <laughs> Indeed, it's a good yeah. exercise. Yeah, so lots and lots of line practice. Um, you can see here the importance of understanding the box and perspective. Here, Swendley kind of um, gives us some transparency into, oh yeah, you know, by the way, I know perspective and structure, like here, here's a head, right? but it's the same thinking that's showing up in the, in the body, right? Yeah, exactly. Yeah, I like, um, here you did a bunch of different things. Here, th this is actually a, a very broad crawling in, in essence, from here and going across the chest to say, you know what, the whole chest is doing this, right? And over here we have the whole side of the body is doing this. And then here you did more of a direct, almost like a wrapping. Right now, it is driving that way too. So I think you did kind of pull off two things at once here because, um, you know, here's the torso again. Uh, you kind of went like this. So it is, uh, it's almost like we're directing a, applied force across to the outside um, edge of the back over there, right? And helping it push out. Yeah, it's like it's it's the squash and stretch principle, you know. Show show how uh, force is wrapping around the um, the squashing side of the torso. Yeah, so it's squash over here. All right, we got stretch over here. Yeah, that's true. 
Yeah, it again it takes me back to that whole flower sack idea we were talking about before, like just understanding if this is stretching, this is going to compress, right? Because they're firm or solid uh, objects, meaning the rib cage and the pelvis in here, and they are connected by a softer region called the core or the abdominal region, right, of the body. So, yeah, cool. yeah so this one's getting there. Let's see, let me clear out all these lines. And uh, so do you have anything, let's see, any other sort of closing notes on this guy, the reference or what you enjoyed about this drawing or what you found easy or difficult or, yeah. Well, what I mostly enjoyed was the the amount of energy and, and effort that the athlete put into the thrust uh, of the shoulder. You can see that very clearly. That that was also the, the starting point for my drawing. This shoulder? Yes. Hold on, let me get my tool here. Yeah, this guy, right? Yeah, how the applied force and that shoulder, that, that is kind of, uh, it's, it's leading everything else. Yeah, so this, to your point, um, this is the leading edge, right? Yeah, exactly. So again, basics is very important once you get the form. Yeah, because it's kind of cool, now that you mentioned this, um, as you know, we have that C idea for the torso that's going like this, but it's all driving into this shoulder and then compressing into the other side. So it's pushing out this way, it's coming over that push out, it's driving over the top of the shoulders and smashing its way out this way where it goes through a, a somewhat tight curve to sweep its way out into the hand, right? Yeah, indeed, it's, it's just uh, kind of like a cause and effect uh, situation. Yeah. And on top of that, once you get the torso in, uh, you can start to recognize how this arm is actually connected to this idea as well, right? So you have yeah, this- it's like dragging behind. Yeah, it's like way over out here. Um, what I like is I kind of look at this as one big giant arrowhead itself, right? Which is like this, right? So it's like everything is driving its way to the arrowhead of the shoulder. Yeah. Right, which is kind of cool too. And trying to see the figure like that, I think, is uh, is really key. All right, so here we are. We're going to close up with um, this drawing from Chapter 2 again in the Force Companion book. Man, we covered a lot of information here between um, surface line, turning edges, perspective and structure, and keeping yourself thinking like a sculptor, right? Yes, sculpting with the Force line. Exactly. All right, we'll see you in our next video, which will take a look at one of the drawings found in chapter three on shape. See you then. See you.